again. My name is Nada Ghazal. I'm the, create, the founder and creative director of uh, Nada G Jewelry. It's a medium-sized business that started in uh, 2004. Uh, I wouldn't want this to be a presentation, really. I'm not like used to presentations. I'm more used to actually talking about my passion, which is creating. Today, I'm going to talk about something a bit different. So um, to be able to make this talk more interesting for me as well, I'd like, just, I'd like to know a bit about you. I need to know, is there anyone in the luxury, in, like in the fashion industry? Mainly designers uh, in retail, designers? Jewelry design, great. Anyone else in jewelry design? Anyone in uh, jewelry production? No? So mainly in the fashion. OK. Um, basically, so I'm going to talk a bit about how technology is, is shaping the jewelry industry. But again, I'm going to talk from my point of view. So it's uh, a bit about my experience in the past 14 years. Um, oops. OK. Uh, so basically, being in this business since 2004, um, I'm going to talk about how technology and innovation has shaped the product in terms of design, how it has shaped um, the process in terms of production, and uh, how it has shaped the customer experience. So basically, uh, technology can really open, um, like open up new design ideas. I'm, ju I'm just going to explain to you a bit about my experience. When I started in 2004, there was a lot of things that I imagined, but I was not able to actually design. Um, maybe because of the details, maybe because of the pr production, I couldn't actually get my uh, what I imagined into, even if I, ha I was able to get it into paper, I wasn't uh, able to um, actually uh, you know, uh, get it into life. So uh, one of... Um, the main things that has changed our lives as jewelry designers is actually being able to do everything, to draw everything on the computer rather than do it on a piece of paper. And by saying that, it means that if any of you today just wants, has an imagination of a piece, you can actually, and is able to uh, finalize this piece on the computer, you can actually get it finalized and I'll take you th through the process. So from a product, from, from a design point of view, I think um, uh, this has really brought us really forward because now we can design things that have the simplest details that we were not able to do um, uh, in 2000, I mean, I was not able to do in 2004. And basically, the technology is significantly saving time in jewelry manufacturing. So uh, the first part was design, OK? And then the second part is the manufacturing. As we know, the jewelry business is really growing. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, there is around 170,000 um, uh, 170 billion dollars of jewelry is sold uh, every year, and it's expected to reach around above uh, 400. 430 will go into the numbers soon. So basically, it's very important to save time in, in actually producing jewelry because there is a big demand in the market. So I'm just going to take you through the few things that we have, that we are working with, that's actually saving us time in producing jewelry. Uh, there is the 3D printing. 3D printing was born in 1981, actually. It's not new at all. It's quite, uh, it's around 40 years old. However, um, Year after year, we've been using 3D printing more and more. Uh, just to give you an idea, like a few years, two, a year ago, uh, when I used to print um, a bangle, like a big bracelet, sometimes it used to take me around 18 hours to print. So I would put it this afternoon to be able to get it tomorrow afternoon, you know, around noon time, so that I can actually finalize the production process. Now the same bangle this year with a newer machine, we, it actually takes us around um, three hours to print within the same shape and same, uh, same size. So even though 3D printing has existed, 3D printing is just like uh, advancing year after another, actually month after another, because even suppliers now of 3D printing, uh, by the time they sell you a 3D printer, the next uh, month uh, the same salesperson comes to sell you uh, an updated one. So basically, 3D printing is just like um, is just like a necessity in every production house. Uh, laser cutting, uh, laser cu just also to talk a bit about 3D printing as well. I'm sorry, I'm going to get there. 
uh, one thing that has been very, like has had a big demand in the market is actually creating jewelry that has uh, multifunction. So multifunctional jewelry. And to actually create multifunctional jewelry, you really need to have um, uh, very specific details and you really need to be very accurate for pieces to be able to uh, make, you know, change position and change design, etc. And 3D printing has really helped us in doing that. Uh, as for laser cutting, um, uh, laser cutting is one of the main um, machines as well in any workshop. Uh, we do not only use it just to um, uh, engrave, I mean it's for laser cutting and engraving, but it also opened because um, people are looking for uh, less expensive pieces. It means people are looking for jewelry pieces that may look big, but are very, like, that have a very, they're low in weight. So laser cutting machines um, have been able to help us as well to actually create pieces that look as if they're big pieces, but then again, when you weigh them, they're very, um, you know, just very light pieces. And basically, so you have a lot of actually production houses who only work on laser machines. They don't have 3D, they do nothing. It's just like pure gold with laser machines. Uh, they, and they just like do uh, a lot of mass production. Um, there is also laser welding. Uh, back in 2004, we used to do everything by hand. Whereas uh, laser welding just helped us to uh, weld any little piece without actually showing the, you know, without actually showing any trace of welding whatsoever. So uh, laser welding is very important and it's just like a must for any uh, jewelry production house. So basically these are just like three out of many machines that um, we feel technology has, I mean that we feel are really needed in any workshop uh, to be able to uh, uh, be, be, you know, be part of this competitive market. And I mean, because first they save us time as well. Uh, there is more demand for jewelry, so that's needed as well. But however, I mean, when I think about it, um, I do love machines as well, but I'm a craftsman, I'm a craftswoman. So uh, it's very important to have a balance. Like for me, technology is not, um, uh, is not enough unless you really have uh, the right finish at the end, uh, uh, you know, the right design, innovative design, etc. So it's just like uh, you have to have a full knowledge of everything. Um, and then we get into improving customer experience. Um, thank you for really getting us into that. Like a, a wider, uh, wider info on that. I'm just going to talk a bit about uh, the customer experience, just like what we are using today. Uh, what's very important for us, okay, is before when we used to, um, when we, uh, I mean, when I started my brand in 2004, it was really very difficult to just like go international. Uh, whenever I needed to go international, we needed to go to trade shows, etc. But now we all know that uh, we can just like by having a website, uh, by uh, social media, uh, by digital marketing, etc. Uh, you know, we already become like just an international brand because uh, someone from Tokyo called us or someone from Australia called us to, uh, to buy a piece, even though we do not have e-commerce yet. But still, you know, uh, you, become, uh, you become global automatically. Now, whereas before it, well, you were just like uh, this little brand in a, you know, in the city. So um, that again is very important. And then we have e-commerce. Um, e-commerce is very important in the jewelry market. Although people think like, really, would someone buy jewelry on uh, e-commerce? But then again, um, we're expecting like uh, two billion, twenty billion dollars in 2018, and then the expected reach is uh, forty-five billion dollars in 20 and 20, 2020. Uh, which is, uh, I mean, a, a large number. So uh, even me being here based in Lebanon, although we sell, we sell in US, uh, uh, Emirates, uh, London, and others, but then we still feel that it's very important to um, have uh, the e-commerce. Uh, although I'm one of these people that just believe in the balance. So uh, for me, I know that a lot of people say retail is dying, but I just, um, I mean, I just think that it's not retail that's dying. I think it's boring, re boring physical retail that's dying. So basically, it's very important to have like a, a combination of a shop uh, where you know a, a physical retail as well as uh, e-commerce, as online shopping. 
And because you still have, especially with luxury uh, brands, you still have people who actually want to touch the piece, uh, who want to touch the fabric, who want to feel it, who want to feel the gold. Uh, so uh, physical retail is still very important. And what's important is just to have a balance between physical retail uh, and the e-commerce. And then um, also now, um, this is uh, something that uh, we also need to think of, although we don't have it personally, which is virtual reality. Because a lot of jewelry brands, especially when it comes to uh, uh, wedding bands and wedding rings, um, they do a lot. Of, they they buy a lot of jewelry through virtual reality because they really need to um, actually try the piece, uh, and then um, do it yourself, which is the personalization. Uh, we're actually starting our online boutique, and. Uh, when I uh, thought of the online boutique uh, last year, before I actually thought of starting it up, um, one of the things that I kept thinking of is, OK, fine, so we'll start an online boutique. But then again, people are going to get really bored of online shopping the way they are bored of physical retail. So I always believe that it's very important, even when you're getting into something new, I think ahead of that as well. Like even now when I thought, okay, I want to have, I want to get into e-commerce, uh, while building the e-commerce platform, I started thinking of, okay, fine, I'm going to build this platform, but I really need to make it interesting. And uh, personalizing jewelry is really, I mean, it's something that could be very interesting because the person may feel that they have actually created that piece. You would actually... Uh, unconsciously make them feel that they have created it, although at the back end you've created every piece of it and they just like mix and match. Um, and for someone to feel that they did it themselves, then it makes it uh, more precious. So I feel this is very important to think of. Uh, and as a matter of fact, um, I think it's very important to think of it as well um, for pieces that you do not have in your retail, uh, in your physical retail stores, because that would drive more traffic to your e-commerce rather than think, okay, but I can find it here, I can find it there. So you just have to differentiate to have that balance. So this is something I think that's very important and th something that I would recommend uh, if someone is going to get into um, an e-commerce uh, platform. Uh, so basically, at the end of the day, uh, I mean, for me, I just think technology is accelerating the industry growth. Um, as I said, uh, in terms of uh, jewelry, um, uh, in 2018, the, we're expecting uh, that the jewelry would sell around $170 billion and uh, reaching in 22 over $440 billion. So uh, I think um, uh, technology at this point has just like, um, we needed technology to get there. And I do not believe that if we did not have um, the facility in designing, like uh, on the computer, the facility in um, having the, all of the technology to produce in a fast manner, uh, I do not think we would uh, got into that growth. I just, um, just to give you an idea, and some, I mean, some of you may, may be like uh, upset about this idea, but in around 2010, let's say like eight years ago, we used to uh, produce around 400 pieces a year. Uh, we had in the workshop uh, four craftsmen and myself. Uh, today we produce above 2,000 pieces. Does anyone have an idea how many uh, craftsmen we have? Uh, no, we still have four. Okay, uh, the thing is with the workshop, you cannot have less than four because usually you have, you have to have the chef atelier, you have to have the goldsmith, you need to have the polisher, and you need to have the uh, stone setter. Okay, so you need to have a combination of the four. Um, however, the four were able to produce 400 pieces eight years ago. Today, the four are uh, able to uh, produce the 2,000 pieces. Okay, uh, which makes a difference, and uh, probably by the end of this year, with the same four people, we're going to produce up to three thousand pieces because we've already, uh, like, uh, we've already passed the one thousand five hundred pieces. So I know it may sound a little bit um, sad to feel that you know the craftsmen are just like uh, you know decreasing in number and the machines are increasing in number. Uh, but then again, I think uh, we're getting uh, more industries nowadays. So basically, there's probably, uh, you know, work in uh, any way uh, um, 
there are other opportunities as well. So um, this is it from my side. Uh, I think uh, everybody loves brands that make a difference. I always say this at the office. And it's always important to take a note of uh, all modern tools that can really help us stand out. So it's very, I mean, for me, I just like look around and see what is it that I can benefit out of because I want to stand out. And I do not stop there. Uh, one of the things that I always believe in is that even uh, when you do find tools that uh, really help you, you just have to always uh, think uh, one step ahead. One step ahead, because uh, like uh, business is uh, so fast and life is so fast. Thank you. Thank you.